Kilo One Golf Mike Mike. Kilo One Golf Mike Mike calling CQ and Mike. Uh, sure, absolutely. Uh, go ahead. Hola, K1 Green M&M here. Lots to cover, so I'm going to see if I can move as quickly as possible. Uh, say hello, Elliot. Uh, Elliot the cat and Bella. They're helping me build the Magloop. I'm working on a Magloop antenna. This tunes from 15 through 40 meters with a minimum efficiency of 71 percent uh, so across uh, 40 20 17 15 meter bands it is anywhere from 71 to 98 percent efficient uh, so let's get started i'll show you what's going on uh, loop diameter is about 39 inches uh, to the from the inside edge uh, approximately 11 feet of tubing in each one of these loops. I do have an additional loop on there with a spacing of two and a quarter inches. Uh, that's specifically for 40 meters. I remove that back loop. It just jumps on and off with a, with a set of screws right here and right here. Uh, that loop, this loop comes off and I have some quick disconnects on the uh, spacers right there and it's all spaced. Uh, that's the radiating loop. This is the primary. This is where you connect your coax to. So direct feed coax. This spacing will help you if you adjust the spacing right here it'll help you get your SWR in line. This thing tunes flat one to one. Uh, perfect across all of those bands. Uh, talk about the capacitor a little bit. Uh, I'm going for max, maximum efficiency on this loop. This is a vacuum variable capacitor, 10 to 100 picofarads. It's built by Comet. I believe they're built in Switzerland. Um, you can get these for about 100 bucks. It's also an extreme high voltage capacitor. You can put 9,000 RMS volts into this with 15,000 volts peak. But that being said, it's very tight. Uh, a very tight capacitor. Uh, 10 to 100 picos is not a lot. Uh, most guys running mag loops run oh, two, uh, 10 to 250, 10 to 350, 10 to 500. The advantage to running a capacitor with a, a broader range of capacitance is that you can get these loops to load with a lot less effort. The issue with that is, is the antenna becomes in a, uh, the, effic the efficiency suffers, so that's the reason why I, why I went with a 10 to 100. I wanted to build the most efficient antenna I could possibly build. Why, you ask? Well, we are coming into the cycle, end of cycle 24, and it's my belief every ounce of go go juice going out is my friend. Gain is my friend. Uh, I do not want anything sitting on coming back to the radio on the coax. Uh, I don't want a dummy load, does me no good. Also, uh, it is March, the first week in, end of the first week in March 2017, and we just had a February with pretty much uh, horrific band conditions as far as static crashing goes in the northeastern part of the United States. Very, very bad. I had an S9 of noise uh, many, many afternoons and evenings on 40 meters. Uh, most people will say, well, the antenna doesn't need to be efficient. Well, I would challenge that in the sense that if you're down half an S unit and you've got S9 of static crashing and your signal is an S8 to S8.5, it's difficult to hear you, man. Uh, you're, you're gonna, people are going to struggle to pull you out of that mess. So that's the reason why I, I say, uh, that's the reason why I'm, I'm, I'm going the efficient route. Efficiency is key. Motor drive. You can get this around $10 from Amazon. This is how I coupled the motor to the variable cap. Uh, these are sacrificial bushings I made up. The cap stops at the end of its travel. Uh, so instead of destroying the cap, I put in a system that will break before the cap does. Uh, so far I haven't had any issues. First contact was with the Bahamas. That was uh, two nights ago. Uh, two, two or three nights ago on 8 watts with the antenna sitting right outside the kitchen door 
in the back patio. Uh, practically right on the ground, four feet of the, above, off the ground, uh, right next to the house. And uh, 8 watts gave me a 5.7. He was a 5.7 to me on a dipole on the beach running 100 watts. And I was running 8. They work. Last evening, 7.195, 10.30 p.m., I lit it up, same place, same location. I took, gave it a little tweak, turned it kind of northeast, 50, 50 plus degrees, and I heard DX rolling in out of Europe, and I keyed up, uh, cranked the power up to 50 watts, and I hit Slovak Republic. First call, right through the pile up, 50 watts, he's running a kilowatt, 5959 I gave him. They work, and they work really, really well. Uh, you have to see it and use one to believe it. Anyways, um, pulse width modulator. Pick these up for 10 or so bucks. Um, this is a field strength meter, which I think is dead. I think I killed it. And this is the control switch for the motor drive for the cap. Uh, the motor drive and the field strength meter pickup uh, antenna. That's what this is. Uh, motor feed, everything runs down a Cat 5 cable all the way back to the station the radio and of course this is the coax feed point this needs to be cut off I have a, a aluminum stand that I put this on and it protrudes up about protrudes up about this much you don't want uh, resonant material inside this area so I'm gonna I gotta cut this off about here and I have a section of one inch PVC with a female on it that will extend this up and away from the aluminum stand that's important uh, keep the aluminum out of the center of that. That'll change things. Um, I think that is it. Um, again, the efficiency is key with this antenna. Bandwidth, that's what I wanted to talk about. Um, another, another benefit to building these if it more efficient is that, I'll give you an example, uh, it takes about 50 picofarads to tune this antenna on 40 meters. Uh, that gives me about a 71% efficiency on 40 meters. Fantastic, right? Um, 15 meters with a single element, 98% efficient, and the bandwidth is ginormous. It's like 50K on 15 meters. So, in, remember, these are an extremely high Q antenna. Uh, they're like the French Alps, man, um, if you were to look at it. Uh, very fine-tuned, finely tuned antenna. You need to be able to slow the motor down and just creep it to get it tuned in. And that's on, a, that's on a good day. On a bad day, if you have an inefficient antenna, you're literally moving, you're retuning every time you move every, oh, 2 or 3K. That's bogus to me, man. It doesn't make any sense. So... Uh, the, if you want inside my head, that's what I'm thinking. Uh, more efficient, the better. There's just it's a win-win. If you think about it, I can argue that point till I'm blue in my blue in the face. Because uh, I, I play, I'm going to upload a video um, on air testing and uh, show the tuning process, and you'll understand why I say efficiency is nice because bandwidth gain is your friend in in bandwidth. It just makes the whole experience so much easier. <laughs> uh, even if you can get 15 to 25k of bandwidth, that's beautiful. Uh, you can kind of skip around and chase some DX or, or move from uh, every 2, 3k and, and talk to somebody without having to retune the stupid thing. It's great stuff. Anyways, that's it. That's all I got. Uh, 7.3, have a great time building one of these. I know the rewards are just epic. Uh, it's a fantastic antenna. Um, can't say enough good things about it. Uh, <laughs> incredible. It's it's actually shocking that it actually works, and it works as well as, as it does. Uh, uh, any questions? Any suggestions? Any ideas? Of course, I'm always open to it. Uh, 7-3. I'll look for you on the bands. K1 Green M&M. &M. <laughs>